All right. Hello. Welcome, everybody. So this is our second uh, meeting for the year. Um, and this is really getting to be an exciting time in terms of where open ed is um, and what we're what we're doing. Um, and so we're going to have quite a few updates. So in terms of the agenda, we have two primary things. We're going to look at um, operation updates and then we're going to look at a focus in terms of programming and the theme. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started and turn it over to Amy. Hello, everyone. We're um, so glad to see all of you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so we're going to, um, for those of you who are, are returning and um, are used to our format, we're going to use Mentimeter to collect information. This has been a wonderful tool to get feedback and to be able to go back and look at that feedback as we're planning and um, making final decisions. So for those of you who are new, um, we recommend that you use a separate browser or device so that you have the presentation open on one screen and then Mentimeter open on another so that you can participate fully in all of the feedback. Um, you wanna go to menti.com and today the code is 83550000. Um, Lee put the link for that in the chat. If you just want to click on it, it should take you there. Um, and I think we will begin with our first question. Excellent. So where are you all from today? Where are you? Which state are you? Um, are you joining us from Acadian province or which country are you joining us from today? And I love, I always love to see the representation. We're, we're just thrilled to have all 50 states represented at the conference last, last year. And we wanna keep that going. We wanna add to our Canadian province and country participation. I see Alberta, I see Tejas, um, a state of confusion. Yes, I think some of us can relate to that. Uh, New York, lots of people from New York, lots of people from Oklahoma and California and Texas. I see shout out to Rhode Island and Wisconsin, Ontario, Alberta. Well, we're, we're so glad that you made time to, to join us today. And so we're gonna just start with um, one of our um, icebreaker questions. And so for those of you who um, <clears throat> made it to the conference last year, um, you probably remember the great Cheeto debate. This is very important. So what is your favorite kind of Cheetos? Oh, what are these people? None of the Cheetos. <laughs> All of the Cheetos. Crunchy looks like it's, well, I don't know. No, I guess people are not eating Cheetos, but I have a feeling that that might be some of our Canadian friends who think that they have a superior brand, but we can continue to debate this at the conference this year. So, okay. And I think now I am turning it over to Nicole. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Amy and Lee for getting us started. Uh, Nicole Allen, Director of Open Education for Spark, and I'm here with my colleagues to give a little bit of an update on the conference operations. Uh, we uh, are starting the second year of a two-year commitment to support the Open Education Conference. Uh, the conference is currently supported by a partnership between four organizations, which are OpenStax, Spark, the University System of Maryland, and the Col Colorado Department of Higher Education. We stepped in uh, after the longtime organizer of the conference stepped aside in 2019, and uh, we're excited to uh, uh, come off of uh, an excellent 2020 conference and support a successful 2021 conference, while also supporting a strategic planning process that's going to sort of decide the future of what comes next. So working in partnership with the steering committee and also the planning committees that are currently in the process of being formed. So I'm gonna turn it over to Daniel from OpenStax to share a little bit about the details of this year's Open Education Conference. 
Excellent. Um, so we are going to be remote again, virtual again, which I am excited about. Um, you know, last year's conference was absolutely incredible. Um, the team did just an amazing job making it more than just a bunch of Zooms, but really making it something that was interactive and uh, a great opportunity for networking and learning. And apologies for the dog clicking noises in the back, if you could hear those. Um, so we will be remote, but hosted by the amazing folks over at the University of Maryland system. Um, so I don't know, maybe we'll have crabs sent around to everybody. Maybe not, that seems like a logistics nightmare. Nonetheless, mark your calendars, October 18th to 22nd, 2021. We'll have a call for, for proposals going out by the end of this uh, month. And then the last, uh, and then registration will start to open in June. So mark your calendars. We look forward to seeing you all there and all of your amazing proposals. Uh, pretty soon. Thanks so much. Am I handing it over to Nicole? Spencer. I think it's my, my turn, actually. Sorry, yeah. I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I was too. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Nicole. Um, Spencer, uh, my name is Spencer with the uh, Colorado Department of Higher Education. So excited to be part of this group. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy National Unicorn Day. I just learned about this day. So um, hopefully you all are enjoying your day, coming back from spring breaks and getting through um, that end of the term grind. Here we go. Um, so as mentioned, you know, the strategic planning team has been toiling away, working very hard and working to establish a strategic plan and governance model for this this project moving forward for open ed moving forward. Um, the process again started in March um, and, and kind of had some foundational background with the, the strategic planning group before then. The process is a very open process running from March to September, which I think we mentioned in the last call. We are supported by Franklin Street Studio. That is a consulting group. Um, and the strategic planning team had their first meeting with, with the group which was a great introductory session. And they're a highly qualified group with a, with a deep focus on um, DEI. So I think something that's really important to everybody in this call and everybody in this community. Um, just a reminder, this process has been and will continue to be a very inclusive process. So integrating feedback from the broader community, conference attendees, these community calls, which are really important um, to, to the work that we're doing and operative future opportunities to provide more input as we make our way through the process. So if you have input ideas, please jot those down um, so we can cultivate the fantastic thoughts um, and thought partnership from, from this entire network as we move forward. Um, that's just a little bit on the strategic planning side of things. I will drop the link to our, our planning teams for all the subcommittees that you are familiar with perhaps at this point. Um, and you can kind of see who's who's participating um, currently. I think we have those updated. If not, they'll be updated very soon. And now I am turning it over to Winnie to tell us a little bit more about um, the call for participation. Yay. Uh, so the call for participation has been open. Um, we have the interest form still going to be open until April 30th for proposal reviewers. So proposal reviewers will be able to review proposals um, the call for proposals that come in and, and kind of work on the programming side of the conference. Um, committee roles are currently being finalized already. Um, so you can kind of expect to hear an announcement uh, of the names that will be going out for this year's committee. Um, and I believe the link is being posted in the chat for the application um, for the proposals, Perfect. for the proposal reviewers. Great, and I think I'm passing it over to Emily. Hi, all. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Okay, well, so we want to just give a little bit of an overview about um, our program from last year. So we had eight general uh, session topics that felt fell within our really big umbrella of reimagining open education. We ended up with 250 sessions um, through our call for proposals. And the vast majority of these um, live sessions were 25 minutes or 55 minutes in length, um, so that we had a five minute transition time between sessions. And we also had um, asynchronous and lightning talks that were in multiple format. Some feedback 
that we got was that some of the 25 minute sessions felt rushed, right? It was like a 20 minute talk, five minutes for questions. Um, and then there was also the feedback that it would be nice to have some session types that weren't recorded so people could really have a candid conversation without fear that it was kind of going to be, you know, a public record sort of situation. So that's some of the feedback that we got and just kind of where we're coming from if anyone wasn't at the conference last year. And so we have some questions that are going to help us as we move forward with our planning for this coming year. And so um, through your mentee, could you respond to what values are at the heart of your open education work? So really trying to ground ourselves in the values and kind of the deepest place that we're coming from, from this work that we're doing together. And thank you, Lee, for reposting the link to Mentimeter um, and the code is at the top of the slides. Okay, social justice, representation, students, diversity, inclusion, access, equity is really <laughs> big here in the center. Um, we're looking at belonging and representation. We're really focusing a lot on students, access, accessibility, academic freedom, beginning, generosity, anti-racism, solidarity. Anyone else wanna chime in with things that I haven't said that, that you're wanting to give voice to? Simplicity, flexibility. Yeah, I, I didn't, sorry, Emily, no, I didn't type it in, but I'm sitting here thinking also continuous improvement. Yeah, on so many levels, right? Like <laughs> from the conference planning and organizing perspective, continuous improvement and our teaching continuous improvement and honestly living our lives, <laughs> right? Like really on so, so many levels, quality. Learning, yeah, for me, learning is deeply at the core, like really effective learning is what drives me, I think, in a lot of this work. Fantastic growth. So definitely social justice, equity, um, access. These are some of the really big words here in the center, community, inclusion, students, of course, students, um, but all sorts, oh, kindness. Oh my goodness. So all sorts of beautiful values. Thank you all. Care, I, you know, we really can see the impact of Mahabali and, and the um, great keynote that um, and Mia Zamora, like the, these threads that maybe I had not consciously thought about at all prior to um, that amazing keynote. Generosity. Well, thank you. This is really a beautiful place to come and ground ourselves and um, really a nice touchstone as we move forward thinking not just about this 2021 conference really, but maybe even the future of this movement and you know, open ed more broadly. Okay, so anything else before we move on? I appreciate people are still typing in, which is fantastic, but it may also be time to move on. Did you, did you call out culturally responsive? I thought, I mean, I saw a whole bunch of themes around that too. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. And I, <laughs> that's right. It's in a kind of darker <laughs> color, so it's not popping out, but I agree. Culturally, culturally responsive. And I like needs also. It's very foundational, right? Um, Anti-whiteness, multiple people chiming in on that. Open information. Iteration. Okay, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and move forward now. And so another open entry, but a little bit longer, if you like, what topics are you most excited to learn about at Open Ed 21? And I'm just gonna scooch. I didn't get better visibility on my second screen here. Okay, open publishing, equity, 
open pedagogy, sustainability, development models, fair use in open education, and social justice in open education, institutional supports, integration of practices, environmental justice, indigenous and openness, research, environment. Let's see, student creation of resources, creative ways to promote OER, more with the open pedagogy, getting funding for our OER work and teacher to teacher collaborations, again with sustainability, open pedagogy and open education research, new textbooks slash resources, social justice, dismantling white supremacy through open ed, student motivation, how to stay excited about open ed and how to teach open pedagogy. Student community collaboration. So really fleshing out what open pedagogy might mean. OER in promotion, more with capacity building. And again, research and open pedagogy, institutional support, norming open education as a practice or strategy, decolonization, integration of practices, practical how-tos, successful systemic models to, oh, <laughs> not fast enough on that one. I'll try to pause it if it comes back around. <laughs> Yes, and you know, I, I've tried to capture as many of them as I can see, um, but if other people want to highlight things that I've missed. And let's see. I'm gonna throw a Mentimeter chat. Oops, <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. I thought I was copying the Mentimeter chat and there was like, something from a biochemistry thing in my chat instead, apologies for that. So anyone who's not on Mentimeter, um, I'm, we threw the chat in there again. Okay. Um, and then there's a question, are these results something we can peek at afterward too? I would love to have this list on hand and Nicole. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So we'll leave this open for people who weren't able to join this meeting live. So if you're watching this recording uh, up to 14 days after this meeting, you'll be able to do that uh, using the code at the top. And, and uh, yeah, we did that last year and we'll do it again this year because the plan is to sort of derive the program structure from this valuable data that everybody is contributing. And um, another new one that I happened to catch was um, kind of strategies for combating inclusive access programs. So that's um, how to communicate more effectively, sharing practices and sharing failures as well. Um, creating a community of practice. <laughs> how to stop the publishers from co-opting terms like inclusive and equitable. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we can try, right? We can try. We are, um, oh, decolonization multiple times. Creative Commons certificate. Okay, S sec successful systemic model to address institutional infrastructure and support universal access to knowledge. That's one I couldn't get out before. Creative ways to promote OER. We've got social justice over there. Fair use in open education. So more with the copyright. Yeah, a lot of a lot of really fun, like from the practical side, um, social justice and anti-racism work. Um, what to do and maybe what not to do in open education. So resources, open pedagogy of student you know, pieces with students. Okay, so lots of really cool themes here. And it will be nice to sit down um, with the, all of the data. And it's, this will be really helpful for the program team to come back to as well as we move forward to getting the call for proposals um, written and out to the community. And you can already start thinking about your proposals even though we don't have our formal call for proposals yet um, because it will be coming. 
And we really want everyone who has um, something to bring to this open ed conversation to have a place within the program to bring that. Yes, and so looking at partnership across K-12 into higher ed. Privacy and surveillance. And data governance. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you all so much. We. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. Really, really, really rich. And thank you all for bringing um, your thoughts and, and really what you're excited about and sharing that with us. Okay. And then we have this question, what session formats do you think we should use in Open Ed 21? What have you seen work well? And I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing the Kansas was maybe from an earlier question, like the where you're from question. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this question is especially important because last year we were sort of flying blind in terms of what was gonna be, uh, what virtual conferences could and, and should look like. But this year we've all been to so many different events and, and we'd really love to, learn from, from what folks have seen at other events that could be brought to open ed this year. So if there are any tools you've seen or formats, please share. And the first couple responses were all around interactions, like informal networking and allowing for interactions. We have panels, unrecorded discussions, which is absolutely already on our radar, 10 minute pre-recorded lightning talks, which we did. And I feel like that was very successful. Um, 45 minute presentations. So that's kind of an intermediate time, um, more hour length sessions, seconding with the unrecorded discussions, informal discussions with small groups. I see in space, networking. Hey, Emily, um, Toucan and InSpace are some pretty cool um, platforms that I've I just got, I just discovered this week. So I don't know if other people have had a chance to um, preview these, but um, they're, they're sort of, they create that, that virtual space that simulates being in person and you can, you know, go from table to table and you can only hear the conversation at your table and but, but you're all in the same room. So I don't know if other people have suggestions for platforms that they've been discovering through this past year virtual work. Yeah, thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. And it's really great to hear um, platforms that people have experience with that really worked well for them. I also see Hopin on here. Is that another one of these platforms? Yeah, I think that's what CC Summit used. More time between sessions. The tea time chats were lovely. Round tables, um, presenter opt-in for recorded sessions so that it's not automatic to be recorded, that it could go either way. Um, recorded lightning talks with a discussion forum for each consider holding sessions in Discord, pre-recorded lecture with a follow-up live question and answer with the presenter. If sessions will have breakout rooms, we can list that up front. So I didn't get that whole thing. Um, but it looks like there's definitely interest in, in being able to have unrecorded discussions. And that really does more closely mimic our experience at conferences. Um, early and late shows were great, private BIPOC channel on whatever platform we chat on. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, so knowing upfront if there's going to be breakout rooms, because some folks are multitasking and can listen, but may not be able to participate more actively and don't want to just be leaving people in dead breakout rooms. So I think that's great to have options around breakout rooms, which is another suggestion right here. Um, gather group networking. Okay. 
any other themes that I'm just not pulling out successfully <laughs> as I try to manage all this information? Other things to highlight here. Yeah, I see in the, the chat here that unexpected breakout rooms are not great for introverts. And, you know, certainly having unstructured breakout rooms can be challenging as well. I, you know, I feel like there's, there's a, a range of challenges as well as opportunities that breakout rooms can offer. Um, Gather Town, Gamer Jibe. So I bet some more cool platforms and I'm, <laughs> I'm just not the one to be up on platforms. So thank you for all of these suggestions. But definitely flexibility around breakout rooms is, is a theme here, not making them required. And seeing the lightning talks show up. Yeah, so it's really some fun ways that we could integrate um, pre-recorded content as well as live discussions to, to integrate those two together. Um, I'm also seeing time to meet in focus groups, like by institution type, size, or state of OER program, facilitated space for brainstorming projects or research projects, maybe a catch-all collaborative document or folder where we can drop links um, to open access educational resources or other content. No pressure to attend everything. <laughs> yeah, no, no time turners required, huh? <laughs> it's, it is hard when we have these rich conferences um, to not be able to go to everything. Anything else there at the end that I wasn't able to get to that people wanted to highlight? I think the one that has presenter opt-in for recorded session, not automatic. So um, worthwhile for us to consider too. Yes, thinking, thinking very carefully about what's going to be recorded and what isn't and, and how to make some of those choices more available. Hopin has one P I see in the chat. Okay. And I see a lot of um, spaces that we, um, need to open up for different groups to be part of. So I think that also speaks to um, sense of belongingness, certainly, you know, a space where BIPOC um, folks to gather in a private space. Um, I think that's important. Yeah, and I had seen something on there about connections with non-conference attendees, maybe, or, or ways to connect even beyond the conference. Um, let's see if that comes up again. Does anyone have one of these platforms that they really thought was amazing? Because <laughs> there's several. Gather, Gather Town, Gamer Jive. Okay, so maybe encouraging non-conference coordinated connections. Maybe how can we build this even beyond the conference? I see a lot of lightning talks, so. And I love this idea of, of the pre-recorded lightning talks, but then a chance to have a discussion. I know we've run a few of those events after the conference was over, but with lightning talks from the conference, and those have been a lot of fun. And then in the chat, I, I see it says, I assume we're keeping SCED, or wait, I shouldn't even say it out loud, because that's a controversy. <laughs> uh, yes, so that is the plan as of now. Um, we are not uh, close to other options, but it worked reasonably well last year and they've added a couple of new features and, you know, I think sticking with, with something that works 
is is wise. So encouraging non facilitated organic connections. Getting back to that interaction piece that's so important that we have to be very intentional about because it's going to be an online conference again. Well, thank you all so much. Again, this is very rich and it's giving us a lot of excellent ideas to think about as we move forward with the structure of Open Ed 21. And in the chat, um, Nicole put that we could really use feedback as how can we structure the tags in our schedule to make it easier for people to find what they're looking for and how we can add breakout rooms maybe as a tag so you would know going in <laughs> there is an expectation of a breakout room or not. And definitely some ideas for facilitated spaces for different sorts of conversations to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's something for us to think about as well. Okay, well, Nicole, do you think we've exhausted that? Okay, so I believe I'm turning it over to Tiffany. Is that right? No. Winnie. 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 Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the theme now. So, uh, you know, this, the reimagining open education was the 2020 theme, and now we're trying to figure out what 2021 should be. Um, we did kind of narrow it down to three options that uh, we felt embodied some of what um, the, the different committees had said uh, they wanted to see forward in, in communities, and that's open for all, to open and beyond, and from imagination to action. So we wanted to take time in this community meeting um, to get feedback from the community on what they like um, out of these three theme names and potentially ask the questions and um, provide feedback that um, we'd love to hear. So if everyone could take a minute to think about it and then vote for the one they like the most. So yep, and just one quick mentee instruction. If you are in a browser, you may be stuck on the last slide. Just there should be a button that says go to slide if you don't see the option to enter this. Sorry. Okay, so it's looking like open for all and from imagination to action. It looks like um, people have kind of, the, the scales have kind of stopped moving for a little bit. Um, so we have from imagination to action and open for all pretty much at the exact same, <laughs> um, exact same area, which is hilarious. I think uh, one of our steering committee members actually predicted this might happen on the call similar to what was happening um, in the, the, the steering committee meeting. So. Uh, yeah, lo and behold, there it is, the top two. Um, it's at the same 6.3 and 6.4. Uh, the, the next thing that we wanted to kind of touch is any additional feedback or ideas, realizing that we may not have thought of everything and you may have an even better idea. So we'd love to hear some feedback on the themes you just saw and then any ideas you may have for the Open Ed 21 theme. Open 
Only things that go down a non-open path. Oh, interesting. Hmm, okay. One with action. So there's already been a lot of action. A scholarship reception. Okay, that, that turns into committee members. Um, mm, imagination might feel more unique to the conference. Okay, making open the new normal. Newcomers welcome. Uh, the first one was a little generic. Okay, open for all is a little generic. Imagination to practice. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Open that starts in pre K twelve, K through twelve. Okay. No theme. Open education is the theme. Yeah, we did hear a lot, a lot of no theme, and we added that to our list of consideration. Did the theme guide anything in terms of the proposals? Are they really linked? Yeah, so last year's call for proposals was definitely linked um, to the theme, I'd say. Correct, correct me, anyone on the steering committee or anything wrong there. Um, it's very much about you know how, how we could reimagine open education. And I think we had a few sessions that really tied to that. I like no theme, no theme. see that last one. Oh, infrastructure for open. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty recent. Uh, recent in the news. Okay, no theme. So, Winnie, I'm pausing on this question. Does the theme yeah. guide anything in terms of the proposals? I think that's a, a useful thing to consider. And the way that it worked last year is that the, the theme provided sort of the, the overarching, uh, I guess, narrative of the conference. So reimagining open education, talking about how the fact that, you know, 2020 has uh, uh, gotten us all to focus more on, on urgent challenges, you know, some new like COVID, uh, some, you know, longstanding uh, like, you know, racial equity and, how to reimagine open education as part of the, the solution to those problems. And that helped drive sort of the themes that were selected for the, the different proposals. I think, you know, sessions don't need to necessarily directly address the theme. We didn't require that last year, but we did encourage it as sort of the spirit of the sessions. And, and to build off from what um, Nicole has just mentioned, the reimagining um, open ed last year was also a time for us to reimagine it, considering that it was our first virtual conference. So it also speaks to the manner in which we are all gathering um, virtually. So, and, and I think we did well because it was very successful. So, yeah. And I think one question that I'm seeing here is, is there a benefit to having a theme when we're very clearly the open education conference? Yeah, and yeah. Um, so there's some argument in these, um, <laughs> in these responses that some people don't feel like we need a theme. Um, and I think other people by proposing themes are suggesting that some people do like the idea of a theme. So I think it's interesting that our community holds a diversity of of thoughts as to whether there's a benefit to having a theme for the conference. In my mind, there's maybe a chance to do some unique year, you know, marketing, and it's a way to have the different year iterations of the conference have um, something special about them or something that's a little unique, even though we do keep revisiting open education every year. And so in my mind, I feel like I do see a benefit to having a theme, even if it's a very um, broad theme that is inclusive of, of this broad community.
Yeah, there are quite a few no themes in here. Um, making open the new normal. And in the chat, I see, um, could there be a central theme that matches up with a suggested track of presentation slash events through the conference, but still be presentation slash events that don't totally line up with a the theme? And that certainly is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that, you know, I don't think a criteria of last year was potentially yeah the theme yeah it's just that it's there to provide a direction if proposals um but maybe even more more proposals would come in directed on that theme of reimagining potentially um but i don't think that we rejected any uh based not being mm -hmm. the theme yeah a theme provides direction and focus yeah. And, and I don't think the criteria for the evaluation of proposals has to be like, it, it's not even in there. It, it doesn't have to like totally align with the team. So, cause that's exclu exclusionary too. And we don't want to be that. So it doesn't have to. also in the chat that the theme could help drive some keynote selection. Mm. So what maybe what does the community want to hear about or focus on in, in the keynotes? That's another way to think about it. Start a thread of counting all the K through 12 attendees at the conference. Okay. So sounds a little like um we want more kind of K-12 representation kind of focus on work. Early childhood. From imagination to action is a nice next step from last year's imagining. Mm. That's right. I mean, but to the extent that we've had open edge as a uh, as a concept around for a while already now, uh, perhaps you know fine tuning even the conferences uh, appeal for that matter. Uh, towards specific uh, theme would be great. And I speak from a recent experience at Kane University. I'm at Kane University. So we had an open education conference uh, with a theme on diversity and inclusion. And to the extent that, you know, this is the time and year for, you know, that kind of uh, theme. And also we want to expand open ed from merely about economic access to about uh, thematic access, you know, thematic diversity. So if we chose something like that, that could even set people thinking about like, you know, how do we extend open ed to include more diversity in the curriculums and so on. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for that. And I know we're certainly very clear that we want diversity to be an important piece of Open Ed 21 and sessions supporting exactly what you talked about. Yeah, and I think um, having kind of equity woven throughout all the decisions and every kind of session is important to the, to the conference. Um, Okay, I think that's great in terms of feedback. Uh, any other last words that people would like to add to this? We'll be sending out the Minty link. So if you think of a really cool theme idea or, or um, just general feedback for the theme and you kind of need to sit on it for a little bit, no worries. You can always um, respond to the Minty link later. Okay, so um, 
I'm going to go ahead and hand it over back to Lee for the wrap up. Okay, so this is kind of your, your last option. We're going to wrap this up. Um, if there's anything else you'd like us to know or consider, um, please go ahead and, and put this here. Um, you know, feel free to, to be honest. We'll pause for just a second for people to be able to, to make those notes. And make sure that if your uh, screen says go to slide to click that button before you submit so it doesn't go to the last question. <laughs> So we're getting some things. That's wonderful. Last year was great, exciting for this year. Good. Looking forward to working with everyone. Absolutely. Last year was really focused on community and connection. And I think with everybody being at home, I think that was very, very valuable in a lot of different ways. Um, oh my gosh, so appreciative for uh, all the work you're all doing for structuring these feed feedback sessions. That's wonderful. Okay, so the amount of sessions to choose from was a bit overwhelming. I think some of us get, um, you know, FOMO for, for some of the sessions uh, when we have a lot to choose from. Less US driven, uh, great direction and expanding the community. Uh, welcome for newcomers. Um, Absolutely. Fantastic. Welcome session for newcomers. multiple time zones. That was something that we did mention at the end. See more presentations about open forms of grading, non-grading, more ways to open up the curriculum. Can we emphasize uh, such topics on the CFP? So <laughs> when we release the recordings, yes. And that may be a way you can prioritize is what's going to be recorded versus what's going to be live. Um, if that's something you guys are interested in seeing uh, later at a later date. Yeah. FOMO to NOMO <laughs> because, <laughs> because you can watch it all. That's right. I'm not sure what this is, so specific grad student thread something. Um, okay, specific grad student thread. So, so maybe people doing specific research for their, for their own um, education. Mentor for first time attendees. There was a fair amount of commentary about mentorship early career OER or OE coffees. That's interesting. Okay, so we're, we're approaching the last, um, the last part here. So thank you for all this feedback. Um, and thank you for all the feedback across, um, across this meeting. This has really been great. Um, this will definitely be something to, um, to look at and, and be great for all of the, the teams when we move on into uh, programming and moving forward with uh, planning this conference. Um, are we ready to move to the next slide? Is there still stuff coming in? Okay. So if you haven't joined us yet, please feel free to join us on social media. It's a great way to keep track of what's going on and stay up with updates and be a part of the conversation. So please go ahead and do that if you haven't already. And then our next meeting is going to be in the middle of May. So 
uh, join us then. Um, go ahead and put it on your calendars and make sure you can attend there. We'll have more updates and probably more questions uh, for you at that time too. So uh, thanks again for showing up um, and participating and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to, uh, to participate and, and fill out that form if you're interested in, in joining us uh, and participate in building this conference too. So if not, have a good day. Thanks guys. Awesome. Thanks everybody. And this recording will be posted on our website along with a lot of the resources that uh, and data that was submitted here today.